Hello, my name is Jay Wright, and this is my first SOLIDWORKS tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about slender column buckling, and how we can simulate that using SOLIDWORKS FEA, which stands for Finite Element Analysis. So first we need to go to Tools, and then down to Add-ins where we need to check the SOLIDWORKS simulation box, which adds the simulation plugin and the simulation ribbon, which we have here. I've already drawn a, a slender column, which will be the model we'll be using. And so under the simulation tab, we go to new study. Since we'll be looking at the buckling of this column. We'll select buckling and click OK. And then we'll need to set a few parameters before we can actually run a simulation. First we'll need to apply a material and when you click the apply material button you have a bunch of built-in options. We will use aluminum 1060 which is a very common aluminum alloy and should be good for buckling because it deforms fairly easily. So we'll apply that material. Next we need to fix one end of the model so that when we apply a force it doesn't just fly off into space or is simulated to fly off into space. So we'll add fixed geometry to the bottom face, and you can also do combinations of roller sliders and applying fixed geometry to different axes and faces in order to simulate like, hinged end conditions or roller end conditions, and by doing that you can simulate the different end conditions for the, uh, the different boundary conditions found in normal step in slender column buckling. Next we'll need to apply a force and we'll apply that to the other end of the column and it will just be pushing in the downwards direction and it will be 10 kilonewtons for our little demo. So now we have a force pushing down on the top and the bottom face fixed and now we need to apply a mesh The mesh determines how coarsely or finely the model is divided into discrete elements so that the equations can be applied to those elements and the simulation can be calculated. So a fine mesh will create lots of little fine elements and take a long time to run and a coarse mesh will provide a, uh, a coarser approximation because it has fewer elements. So we'll just pick the middle as a compromise between having a good approximation and having it run quickly. And we'll click OK. And it creates the mesh. And you can see that the model is actually divided into little polygons by the software. Now we can click Run. And it'll do a little thinking. And you can see that there is some deflection due to the buckling of the column. Uh, this deformation is not to scale, it's exaggerated. As you can see at the tip in the red, which has the most amount of deformation, it's only 9 millimeters, but there's a deformation scale that's about 14 to exaggerate it so you can see where parts deform more easily. And then the color gradient here uh, provides another visual cue as to where the part has remained fixed and which end of the part has deformed. Uh, buckling is interesting because with uniform cross sections and for good slenderness ratios, uh, you can actually calculate how much the beam will deform and at what point the beam will buckle uh, fairly 
easily with some well-established algebraic relations. But when you do more complicated designs such as a, uh, a stepped column or a column with non-uniform cross-section, it becomes a lot harder to do the math in order to predict it, in order to predict the performance. So if you do an FEA simulation of a simple uh, geometry and compare it with your hand calculations and then even compare it with actual testing and determine that they're all closely correlated, you can begin to trust the FEA software and use it on more complicated geometries and hopefully when you test those more complicated geometries in real life they will match your FEA predictions. I hope this little introduction to SOLIDWORKS simulation has been helpful and go ahead and play around with it yourself and try different geometries and different forces and see if you can make a column buckle. Thanks.